it's good to be in the house of a God on Sunday morning. I uh, normally would be singing this morning, and I'm just saying what I'm saying right here. I don't even know why I'm saying it. Anyways, I didn't even look at our planning center, what was on the schedule, what, what songs were to be sung, or what was going to go on here this morning. I just hit decline and sent Brother Zane into a mild heart attack and all those good things. But there could not be a more perfect worship set for what the word of the Lord will be this morning. I felt it in prayer. I felt it since yesterday evening, and it's just been confirmed here this morning. Our singers can make their way down, and if you have your Bibles, you can turn to Ecclesiastes 3, and we will start in verse 10. So honored to be standing in this pulpit for the second Sunday morning in a row. Miss my pastor this morning. Miss his family. Give him double honor, all the honor that he deserves, all the honor that his family deserves. And I count it, count it a great responsibility to stand here when he is not in the house. And I thank him for his trust and his leadership and mentorship. And the word of the Lord says, I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he hath set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God make from the beginning to the end. You can turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And I know they'll have it up on the screen here momentarily. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. You can put your Bibles down. Let's lift our hands and talk to the Lord for just a moment here. seated and brother Zane I'm not going to preach very long so don't go too far life has a funny way of treating us it doesn't seem to matter if we're man or woman boy or girl child or adult it just seems to have a similar path that we all trod there's ups there's downs there's twists and curves that we never expected there's heartache and there's heartbreak and there's moments of pure joy that we think in that moment cannot be matched. And yet, somewhere down the road, we find ourselves with another moment that's filled with more joy and more happiness. And on the other side of that coin, there's moments of heartbreak and hardship. And we think to ourselves in that moment, surely there could be no lower than this low and there could be no more hurt than this hurt. And yet, somewhere down the road, we once again find ourselves with another hurt to deal with. And in that moment, it seems like, once again, there is no way that there could be a hurt that's worse than this one. But as we travel this road, that's just a reality. It's not something that you can affect. It's not something that I can affect. It's not... It's not something that we can change. We can't get up in the morning and if we wear this pair of shoes, the hurts won't come. And if we put that belt on, there will be more joy. There's not a decision that you can make because, man, we don't write the script. We don't set the battles that are before us. We don't set the trials that are in front of us. And we don't set the moments of joy that are in front of us. But can I tell you this morning that there is a God who sees and knows 
all of it. He understands each and every trial that you're going to walk through. He, he understands each and every trial that you have walked through. And He understands each and every moment of joy that is to come. And He has purposed each and every one of those moments uh, for a certain aspect of your life. Uh, you don't even realize it, but the hurts come when you need to be broken. The hurts come when God needs to put you in a place uh, that He can reach you uh, and teach you uh, and build you. Uh, and make you more than you were before the hurt came. you got to understand that when He turns around and gives you joy, it's because you've grown. You've grown and now there's a time of healing. And now there's a time of healing that has to come. Oh, and when your growth is complete, when your growth is complete and you're walking in victory and you're walking in power and you're walking in happiness, just know this is just for a short time and and it's probably not going to be too long down the way. And you're going to find yourself broken and hurting again. But you've got to change your perception, friend. Being broken and hurting and sorrowful. It's not the bad thing that the world makes you want to think it is. It's not the joyless thing that people in life tell you that it is. But it's another moment of growth. It's another moment of building. It's another moment where God can reach you like he can't reach you when you're on the mountain when we're up high and this is an old old saying we've we've you've heard it before but if you've ever been up on top of the mountain you look around there's some growth there there's a little bit of trees and there's a little bit of grass and there's a little bit of this and that but for the most part, in comparison to what's below, it's pretty bare. But the further down you go, the further elevation that you go down, you see as the grass gets greener. And you see where there's more plentiful trees. And you see as the crops that we grow to live on are in bounty when you're off of the mountain. But when you're up on top of the mountain, you don't find life-sustaining growth there. You don't find, you don't find life-changing growth there. Yeah, it feels good when you're on the mountain. And yeah, the breeze is blowing. And you're looking down and it's seems like you're untouchable and it seems like there's not a care in the world but when you're off the mountain when you're down in the valley in the depths of despair that you can't understand that you can't grab a hold of oh when you're going through the trial when you're going through the trial that you can't wrap your mind around and you're asking God why me why am I here how did I get here why me God you're just being broken so he can rebuild you your outward man is perishing you can't sleep at night you can't seem to choke your meals down you, 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 can't, you can't seem to enjoy the things that have always been enjoyable. The music that's always tickled your ears and brought joy into your heart and your mind. Suddenly, it just doesn't seem to bring as much joy and happiness. And the people that you love to be around, suddenly, it's not that you don't like them anymore. But there just seems to be this little wall that you, you can't quite understand. And you love them, but you don't quite want to be around them as much. And the world calls that depression and the world calls uh, that uh, mental problems uh, and the world calls that uh, internal anguish and heartache uh, oh but that's not uh, that's not what it is friend uh, that's God just trying to put you in a place uh, where he can talk to you uh, you're misinterpreting you've grabbed onto the depression line uh, and you're holding on to it for all you can uh, and it ain't about depression uh, it's about God trying to talk to you I don't want to be around my friends. I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to hear from the voices that usually echo in my life. I don't, I don't this. I won't. You got to be careful. Don't you get so isolated that your pastor can't speak to you. Don't you get so isolated that the elders in your life can't bring you a word from God. But friend, you need to take the depression idea and kick it right on out of your life and get it through your head. God's trying to talk to you and build you. I 
and you're travailing and you're crying and you're praying and it seems like you're struggling to gain an inch it seems like you've put it in four wheel drive you've got the winch hooked off to the biggest tree that's out there and you're flipping that switch that's normally your lifeline and it's pulling for all it's worth and you're pushing and you're turning you're jerking and you're snatching and you're on the inside and you're in turmoil and you're travailing before God and you've got it through your head that something's wrong honey something ain't wrong God's just trying to build you When you're crying and you're travailing, that's when God's ears are opened. When you're weeping before the Lord and your heart is soft and broken and fertile, that's when he can build you again. Seventeen of Second Corinthians says, For our light affliction, oh, which is but for a moment. Right now, it seems like this mountain is insurpassable. It seems like this valley is too deep. This one's too dark. Be honest with yourself. How many times have you gotten there? How many times have you gotten to that point in your life? And if you're honest, right now, you can look back on it, and it seems like it was yet but a light affliction. How many times have you been in the deepest and darkest depth that you've ever been in? And in that moment, it consumed your whole world. And in that moment, it took every piece of you and it owned it. But right now, if you look back at it, you can say, but it was yet a light affliction. It was just a light affliction. It was just a light affliction. Listen, when you're like me and you're out of shape and it sounds like you're about to suck all the oxygen in the room when you're in the microphone and you're just waiting for everybody out there's faces start turning blue because they can't breathe and you decide on a Wednesday to go and pretend like it was 10 years ago and you were just sort out of shape and run a mile and flip tires and lift weights Listen, on Thursday, when you're in the middle of the pine thickets, going up and down the hills, toting chainsaws, you feel it. It hurts. And it hurts a lot. But if I'm ever going to get myself back in a semblance of shape, if I'm ever going to find myself where I can run and not suck all the wind off the track... If I'm ever going to find myself in a point again where suits that I bought five years ago that somehow I've come back around and they're in style again, but I can't wear them because my gut's too big. If I'm ever going to get to where I can put those back on and they're going to look good, I'm going to have to exercise and I'm going to have to work and I'm going to have to push and I'm going to have to breathe hard and I'm going to have to labor and I'm going to have to pull. And when I think I can't go any further, I'm going to have to get up and go again. It's the same thing in your spirit honey when you get to the point where it seems like you've reached the apex when it seems like you can't get beyond right here when it feels like you can't pull the rope any tighter and it feels like you can't run the race any harder you gotta keep running you gotta keep running you gotta keep pulling you gotta go pray again and again and again and again and again See, there will come a time where if I keep running and if I keep sweating and if I keep lifting and I don't, I don't shove Takis down my face hole and cheeseburgers and if I don't shove down the, the mess of this world and when I'm feeling blue, I don't turn on the sad songs that I used to listen to. And, and when, I, when I'm feeling down, I don't turn back to worldly entertainment because I can grab a hold of it in that moment. And it distracts my mind from what's really going on. And if I can just find myself continuing oh, to consume the good things, if I can find myself continuing to consume good preaching and 
good teaching and the word of God. If I can just eat that, if I can just eat that and I can stay away from the junk, if I can stay away from those who have put aside the gospel and turn their self to the faith of men and suddenly I find myself on YouTube and on my podcast listening to something oh that's diluted oh and it's half right and it's half wrong which makes it all the way wrong oh but it feels good in the moment and they seem to be joining me in my boohoo party so I consume it and I listen to it and 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 you're gonna fail and you're gonna fall oh but if you just consume the good things if you just consume sound doctrine if you just consume the preach word of God and not the preach word of man if you continue to take the prescription that God's given and put aside the pharmaceutical You're so deep in it. You're, you've come so, you, you find yourself so far in this valley, in this, what's going to turn out to be a, a light affliction that you find yourself considering. Or maybe I just won't go to church this next Sunday and I'll stay at home and, and, and Monday comes around and it's prayer time. And we stay on from that too. And Tuesday comes around, it's just, it's just midweek service. And I can stay, I can stay away from that too, because I think it would be better for me if I stayed home and I made sure to drink my however many ounces of water a day you're supposed to drink now, and, and I gave myself some self-help. You know, I just I took care of myself for a little bit. Man... I'm all for it. I'm all for mental health, mental stability. I'm all for you loving who you are and, and, and taking care of who you are. I'm, I'm, for, every, I'm for every single bit of that. But, 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 but listen, that's a cake that this world is serving today. And the problem with that recipe is you need a little bit of old school in there. Somewhere in there, you've got to be able to look beyond your self-delusion just enough to understand that sometimes what you need to consume ain't easy. And sometimes you got to push, you got to push beyond what feels good in the moment to do what's right and to get the help that you need. You, you, this, this. This new, this new school, we, hi, we hide behind good things nowadays, and we turn them into something that's just ridiculous. Do, do I think depression is real? Oh, you better believe it. Hey, do, do, do I think that internal anguish and internal struggle is a real thing, and it's something we've got to beat? Oh, yeah. I believe it. <laughs> but you... You, you gotta quit. You gotta quit chasing those things that just make you feel good about where you're at. You, you, you found you found a candy stick to munch on when you're depressed that makes you feel good about being depressed. You, you, you found a little candy stick to munch on that when you've got your mind where you don't feel like you can go another day, you know if you eat on that for just a little bit. It, you're not going to fix the problem, but you'll feel good about where you're at. That's not the answer. The answer is in the house of God. The answer is in the prayer room. The answer is in the teachings and the preaching. It's when the songs are being sung. You lift your hands and you lift your voice and you sing right along and you praise despite your circumstance. And you lift your hands and you say amen and you say hallelujah. That don't make sense. I know it don't make sense. Oh, but God didn't spell everything out so that you could understand it. He didn't put every single thing in place so that there would never be any doubt in your mind. Because if you had all the understandings and you had all the everything figured out, you would never grow. You would never build. You and him would never get to know each other more and more and more, friend. Oh, You found yourself. You found yourself in the middle of light affliction. 
Uh, the back half of that scripture that says, though my outward man perish, though my, though my mental state is weak, though my, though my body feels terrible, though I can't, I don't want to function, I don't want to get out of bed, I, I'm so sad, all I want to do is lay here. but for a moment. For us, a far more and exceeding and eternal weight of glory. The inward man is renewed. You hear me? I know. I, I know your flesh and your mind may be weak, but your soul, your soul is still strong. Your, your, your spirit it's still strong. Uh, uh, the things of God, they're still strong. Uh, it, it's still strong to pray. Uh, and it's still strong to worship. Uh, it's still... The inward man is renewed day by day. Mm. Mm. Brother Allen, I prayed this morning. And I didn't feel a thing. I, I sung the songs as loud as I could, but I didn't feel a thing. Oh, yeah? So you're telling me that your outward man is still weak. So, so, so you're telling me uh, that what's, what's going on on the outside, uh, it, it's, still, it, it's still not strong. Uh, so, so you're telling me that, that, that what's going on out here uh, where we can see uh, and the things that we can touch and we can feel and we can talk about, uh, those things, uh, you're, you're telling me that, that that's still weak. Uh, but, but what about your inward man? Uh, oh, what did singing that song uh, do for what's going on uh, on the inside? Uh, what, did, uh, what did worshiping God uh, one more time, uh, what did that do uh, for your inward man. I, I tell you what it did. It just renewed it a little bit. It just renewed it a little bit. It just renewed it a little bit. Listen, I, I'm being a little comical when I go back and talk about this, but seriously, the last few days, what is it about men? Why, why do we... Don't go to the gym for six months. Eat pizzas, wings, cheeseburgers, and french fries for a year. And then on a Wednesday, decide, I can still run a mile and everything's going to be okay. And let me tell you, I've taken all the ibuprofen that's available... If, if I take any more, the bottle says I'm going to die. I, I, I've mixed in Excedrin, which I know you're not supposed to do, but I did it anyways. I took the protein powder, and when I rolled out of bed this morning, my thighs on the top, I wanted to cry. And every day I took, I took a step, and it would burn, and it would hurt. And we riding this four-wheeler up and down these hills, and every bump we come across, it just jarred me again. But listen, listen, listen. Hear me real quick. I was hurting. And whether I could see it or not, though, that ibuprofen, it was doing me some good. Uh, I, could, I couldn't feel it in that moment, but I know that, that protein powder that they, they told me to take afterwards, there was a healing process that it was helping along. It, it was helping those muscles begin to come back together and to, and to heal the tears that happened when I was exercising. It, it, I couldn't see it with my physical eye, and I, I couldn't feel it in the moment, but probably by tomorrow, I'm going to get up and it's going to hurt a little less. And, 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 and You understand what I'm saying right now? Huh? Sometimes the Spirit lets us go through this stuff and lets us tear and lets us and it seems like nothing's going on. Well, what's really going on 
is that muscle? It's getting rebuilt just a little bit. And I probably can't squat 100 more pounds in a couple of days. But if I could see, if I could see that muscle, I, I bet you there's a little growth there. And, and I know right now it, it don't seem like you're going to shout all over this place. And I know it, it doesn't seem like next week instead of the report of I'm struggling, I'm hurting, I'm wounded, that you're going to come in here saying I'm joyful, I'm happy, and I'm blessed. But if you'll just keep consuming the things of God, if you'll just keep coming back to the well and drinking again and again, if you'll just keep consuming the Word, I know you can't see it. I know that physically you can't feel it and you can't touch it. Oh, but something's happening on the inside, honey. The inward man is being renewed. And when it just seems like it can't get any worse. And when it just seems like my thighs was the main concern. Suddenly the dead limb falls out of the tree I'm cutting down. Whacks me across the head. And Sunday morning, I've woken up. And I've got the most awful pain going down the back of my head. And into my neck. And down into my shoulder. And my ear hurts too. And I thought the thighs were bad. But I'd give two more days of that to get rid of this head pain. I found out that was just the light affliction. I woke up yesterday morning thinking to myself, I never want to do this again. I'd just eat a cheeseburger and die when I'm 40. But if you gave me a chance to go to the track right now and run and know I'd hurt again tomorrow, I'd do it to get rid of this head pain. I know it seems horrible. <laughs> and it kind of seems like I just said, well, don't get too attached to that. It's just going to get worse. It could, but it probably won't. But if it does, if it does, this is just a light affliction. There, there's, so, there's so much more beyond this. You, you, think, you think that this is the end. This is not the end. This is just the next building block. You think that, you think that this was the period on the end of the sentence. I'm looking around this morning. I don't see very many guests here. I feel like I'm preaching to somebody in the house. I feel like I'm preaching to somebody that you come here. This is, this is, this is your place. You, you call this place yours. You're blood bought. You're filled with the Holy Ghost. You've been baptized in Jesus' name. You're living for God. You're teaching a class. You're teaching Bible studies. You're coming to outreach. You're coming to prayer. And in this moment, you're being plagued by what it's, it's a light affliction, I'm telling you. <laughs> Don't you stop. It looks ugly right now. It, 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 look, ooh, it looks like it couldn't get worse right now. But let me tell you something. In his time, it's going to be beautiful. In his time, it's going to be beautiful. Huh? Oh, when it's over with and it's put back to... Brother Zane, make your way on up here. I've been trying real hard not to get to this point. And I just, you know, I don't see anybody here in the house that we hadn't preached to before. So you know what we're talking about right now. We're talking about the joy of the Lord. We're talking about the Holy Ghost. We're to, I, there's not a face in the house that I've never seen. And I know you've been preached to. So you know. So 
I'm going to go this route for just a minute. Because I, I feel this. Our brothers and our sisters are around us right now. And there's, there's people in this house, they're, they're being lightly afflicted. But it seems like the end of their world at this moment. It, it seems like there's no more pain that they can endure. But you and I, we're not there right now. We're on the mountaintop and we've got the testimony and everything is hunky-dory and we're... And really and truly, even for some of us that are in the moments of hurt and in the moments of pain, it, it's real hard to get here at this point. But if you can just really, really, really look within yourself and be 100% honest. These next two scriptures, they ought to excite you. They ought to make you feel Pentecostal. Don't, don't get too... Uh, <laughs> I don't even know what you call it, Brother Zane. But let's be Pentecostal for a minute. Verse 8 of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, it says, We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. Woo! We are perplexed, but not in despair. Mm. Persecuted. Ooh, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Ooh. My God, if you got the Holy Ghost, that ought to make you want to jump to your feet. Oh, and shout! They already sang about it. There's hope for tomorrow. There's hope for the morning. There's hope for the evening. There's hope because you're breathing. Oh, I tell you what, that, that last part right there, while they were singing it, something on my inside, it spoke to me. And I realized it might not just be talking about breathing in a little oxygen. But what if, oh, what if there's hope because you're breathing in the wind of God? A huh, saint, huh, huh, filled with the Holy Ghost, tongue-talking, Pentecostal, apostolic doctrine living. Maybe that song, it's talking about there's hope because you're breathing in the breath of God into your life. And I can't help myself. Listen, this is as much altar call as you're going to get. What you do with it here in the next couple minutes, it's 100% up to you. But I believe this morning, you, you ought, there ought to be something rise up in you. There ought to be a defiance rising up in you right now that says, Devil, mm. oh. Ooh. This is a light affliction. Look, you know I love this. I can't help myself. I, if Brother Zane would let me pick all the songs, we'd sing gospel from the moment we walked in here, probably till y'all got in your cars and left. I, can, I can't help myself. And it was like, I went, to the, I went in the coffee shop and I made myself a drink this morning because, you know, caffeine. And I, I was just dragging. And I was, I was walking across there. I had my, my, my earpiece in and my, my music playing. And suddenly, it flipped on over there to Brother Court Chavis. And he... I heard the first notes, and it was everything I could do to not just start shouting right there in the coffee shop. And Brother Ashton would have been mad because coffee grounds would have been everywhere, and, and I'd have left it for him to clean. We're just that kind of friends. I know he wouldn't have minded. But I heard the notes. He said, all my life, woo, you have been faithful. And all my life, you have been so, so good. And so with every breath, 
that I am able. I will sing of the goodness of God. And that's it. Oh, and I know if I had a music video where I could have seen, I've seen it so many times, I would have known everybody on that platform. They begin to shout and they begin to dance and they begin to get Pentecostal. Why? Was it because everything in their life has been right? Was it because everything in their life has been easy? No, it ain't that, honey. It's because they were lightly afflicted, but now they're on the other side of it. And it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's somewhere in our we're Americans, so we we have a right to everything mindset. That's exactly how I feel, Brother Craig. Do that again. That's how I feel about it. We look at this scripture right here. (laughs) It says, I've seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. Wait a minute. You telling me that Jesus Christ, my spiritual, whether you want to look at it this way or not, my spiritual personal trainer, Gave me an exercise that was going to hurt? Huh? You're telling me he put together a workout program in the spirit that was going to cause me some discomfort? How dare he? Yeah, but... Listen, look, look what's on the other side of it. Look what's on the other side of that 30 days of struggle. Huh? But look what's on the other side of that workout that hurts you so much. My. <laughs> Amen. That's exactly how some of us feel about it. And God's looking at us going. You have so many lifelines around you. You have so much support around you. You have so much help around you. I, I, I just thought that last week when you ran across the front and about took the whole front row of girls out and clipped Sister Ryder in the back turn, when I saw you do that, I knew to myself, they could endure this light affliction. But we've got the wrong mindset. We're looking at the affliction like it's a bad thing. And it's not. It hurts in the moment. There's pain in the moment. But on the other side, it's beautiful. (laughs) On the other side, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Why? You know, I wish it was 1995 all over again. And at this point, the shoes were gone. The hairpins were in the deal because it didn't matter what you preached. They just, you know, we were Pentecostal. It's what we did. But I guess let me give this, this altar call thing that we feel like we have to do now and put a period on what God has to say. Why don't you come down here? And let him encourage you. Hey, and if you aren't lightly afflicted right now, you ought to let your praise edify somebody else. Hey, listen, when Paul and Silas was in the jail cell and the chains began to rattle and the earth began to quake and the cell doors began to pop open and the chains began to fall off, Guess what? Plural. Doors. Chains. Not their door and their chains. But everybody else that was in the prison, their door popped open. 
and everybody else that was in the prison, their chains fell off. You ought to lift him up. If you, if you, if you, if you got a hold of hope this morning, if you're on the other side of your affliction, if God's done building on you for the moment and he's got you at the point where everything is pretty and beautiful again, you ought to let your praise help your brothers. You ought to let your prayer build your sisters. You ought to... Come on, right now. You ought to do it. Yeah, you, you ought to talk to him. This is not a pep rally. God's in this house. And he's reaching. And he's speaking. And he's pulling. That ought to be enough. Before they start singing, you ought to let your voice be heard. You ought to make the rafters ring. Yeah, you ought to cause the walls to shake in your brother's prison. Woo! The chains ought to rattle. Come on, they're not going to sing until we tap in. You, they're not going to sing until we, we, we that are the body of Christ. We are the ones that are supposed to represent Him. We are the ones that are supposed to be the conduit for the Spirit to flow. They're not going to sing until we tap in. You better go. Well, hey, God's trying to do something in this house. He needs you right now, He needs your prayer, He needs your worship. young people it wasn't but just a Friday night before last oh with that same spirit walked into the room and you all by yourself you begin to touch the throne room of God and suddenly he swept in come on do it for your brothers do it for your sisters ah Come on, touch the throne. That's it, sister. Thank you so much for joining us for service today on live stream. If you'd like to see more content from Souls Harbor, you can check our YouTube channel out. And if you'd like to know some details about the various ministries of Souls Harbor, you can see some of that on our website. We're praying for you and believing that God's moving on you and that his hand is going to work a miracle in your life.